I'm looking forward to uh, talking with Don King. He is a charismatic man, very controversial, and probably one of the world's premier promoters of sports events and entertainment. He's a man responsible for bringing us, if you remember, Thriller in Manila, mm -hmm. The Rumble in the Jungle, and the 1984 Michael Jackson tour. And his next event is called Vindication in Las Vegas. Still mm -hmm. love those names? It's a rematch between Larry Holmes and Michael Spinks, which takes place uh, April 19th at the uh, Hilton Hotel in Las Vegas. This is a uh, first time on The Tonight Show. Would you welcome Mr. Don King? <laughs> I'm delighted to be here. Yeah. Well, it's nice to finally have you here. It's, it's been, been a long, a long time. time. Yes, it has, John. We don't know each other well. We have talked a couple of times, mm -hmm. passed in the halls, and uh, seen you in a couple of restaurants. Yes, but yeah. we're both true Americans. True Americans. Yes. Now, Only in America could a Don King happen. I've got to do. So I've got to do something. I've been waiting to do for a long time. Would you just stay right there? <laughs> <laughs> now, now let me ask you something. <laughs> now be truthful with me. Mm -hmm. If you saw me walking into a restaurant, <laughs> walking down the street, you, know, you saw this hairdo, what would you say? So you were truly a man of God. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most beautiful hairdo I've ever seen, it right? Is. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, I cast standing straight up there, pristine and beautiful. I could not resist that. Oh, that was wonderful. Yeah. Has, has you, now, you've worn your hair like this not, not all your life, right? No. Uh, you know, in 1971, after a very traumatic, excruciatingly painful situation, yeah. I went to bed one evening, Yeah. and my hair was kinky like any other blacks, curly, right. right to the scalp, and it began to pop up. I had a rumbling in my head and began to pop up, ping, 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 ping. <laughs> And each one of your hair is set up there pristine and beautiful. Yeah. Just like you see it now. No mousse. Yeah. <laughs> no artificial preparation. And it just stands up there like that. And it got me, you know, I didn't know what had happened. So I was excited about it. I'm going to tell you the truth because everybody yeah. else don't know. But I'm telling you like this, this is. Now, you're not cut. This is the, no, you're not this putting is, me this on. Is this. this is the truth. Yeah. And I couldn't figure it out. So being a religious man, I thought about it like Samson and Delilah. You know, he put the strength. The Lord put the right. uh, strength in Samson's hair. Right. All right. So I thought it was an aura from God. Yeah. You know, and it's been that way ever since. I tried to go get a haircut one day, and I got electric shock from the scissors and got migraine headaches, so I had to let them alone. In 10, 15 years, I ain't had a haircut. Yeah. And it just, um, does, it, does it come down at night or just... Uh... You know what it does? It goes up into a cone. You know, even when I get into the shower and it's matted down wet, yeah. it pops right back up. It does, huh? It's a mystery, man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with you if you say oh, so. Big Ed, my man. Yeah. You, yeah. You, <laughs> you have been called probably the most, one of the most successful promoters uh, or businessmen. Does it bother you when people say one of the most successful, quote, black businessmen? Why don't they just say one of the most successful businessmen? So, who incidentally happens to be black. Who happens to be black. Yes, yeah. yes, I understand. Yeah. How did you get into the promotion game? I know you used to, you, you used to caddy, you used to be, do a lot of different things. What are some of the odd jobs you've had in your life? Well, I've had them all. I've caddied, I've been a busboy, a waiter. Right. You know, all of the menial or right. job that come from Cleveland, the, the, yeah, from Cleveland, Cleveland, Ohio, the best location in the nation. Great right. city out there, you yeah. know? <laughs> yes, yes, Save it for Cleveland. Let's see it for Cleveland. And you have done some of the great promotions of all times. Yes, I have. I'm very thankful for that. Uh, I had an opportunity to work with the legend himself, Muhammad Ali, in helping a black hospital in uh, 1972 that was closing its doors. It was called right. Forest City Hospital. Right. So I launched a fundraiser, so to speak, and and it was a sensational, it was a smash. Yeah. And uh, so Ali prevailed upon me to go into a boxing promotion, and I ended up in the promotion That's right. Field. That's the first time. And then mm -hmm. from then you, uh, you got involved with the, the Joe Frazier uh, Ali fight, right? Yeah, the Thrill in Manila. Thrill in Manila. Now, that, the other one was the Rumble in the Jungle. Well, that was the first one when he won the title back from George Foreman. Right. In 1974. Right. Now so, you've got Vindication in Las Vegas coming oh, up. Oh, that's going to be great. You know, Baron Hilton was talking to me. You know, he's a great guy, Baron Hilton. Yeah. And uh, his genius really came two to four when he appointed uh, a dynamic guy named John Giovanco, mm -hmm. who's the new thrust in the Hilton Hotel now. You know, that's number one in casino gambling in hotels. I didn't know that. Well, I'm going to let you know that. Because oh, we're going to invite you to the fight. You, Ed McMahon. Right. All right. You know what I mean? Doc Severinsen. Right. With his golden horn. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And we want you all to be there in bum basket Henry Bushkin. Oh, yes. That's yes, right. we want you to be all right there at this fight. Okay. With guess the Baron Hilton and John Giovanco, who's the president. What would a ringside seat cost? $500. 
Hmm. You know what I mean? But uh, <laughs> it's less a spittance for such a great event when you see uh, the dynamic duo perform, Butch Lewis and myself taking on uh, putting together with uh, yeah. Holmes and Spinks. You know, this is the first time, Johnny, that I can truly say who I'm rooting for yeah. because I got a, a co-promoter named Butch Lewis who has the other fighter named Michael Spinks. Right. So you're rooting for Larry Holmes. Larry Holmes. Larry Holmes. Yes, and Spinks has two chances, slim and none, and slim's out of town. That's bad. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> now, what kind of a what kind of a purse? You have been responsible, if I understand it for getting fighters a lot of money because a fighter's career is limited. Yes. You know, by the time a fighter is, I guess, in his late 20s, they say generally, he's on his way down. They say the peak is around 27, 28, and then the good ones may hang on for a few years. So it's limited, but you have gotten them a lot of money, haven't you? Now, yes, what would sir. be the purse for Larry Holmes and Michael Spinks? Well, they'd be getting millions. Larry would be getting a couple million. And, and a couple Spinks, million yes, bucks. And, because he's the challenger this time, Spinks will be getting around four million plus. You know, plus a percentage on the upside of whatever. Four million dollars. Yes. Mm -hmm. Even if he goes out in the first round. Yes. Well, we don't count the time. You know what I mean? We just yeah. have to get it. You have to show up. We just want you to show up. You know what I mean? And fight. You know. You four know. million bucks. Yes, yes. What's the biggest purse of all times? So is there a bigger purse? Well, Sugar Ray Leonard has made a ten million dollar purse, and uh, Muhammad Ali has made a ten million dollar purse. Holmes and Cooney made ten million apiece when they fought in the last Hurrah in 1982. Yeah. So it's been some major purses that have been brought about through uh, my ingenuity uh -huh. and my hustling ability, and that's why I'm here in Hollywood now. Would you call yourself a hustler? Oh yes, absolutely. I'm from the streets, from the from the streets to the executive suites, from the uttermost to <laughs> the <laughs> See, they don't call the executives at NBC hustlers, but maybe you're right. Everybody yeah. hustles in the business, right? Absolutely. You know, I've, I've, when I went over to the Hilton Hotel, that's the flagship. You know, this is, uh, uh, that's in the Las Vegas Hilton there. Yeah. The posh, opulence, elegance there is just yeah. something for everyone. And right. if you're lucky, just if you're lucky, you can become a millionaire. I was just thinking that uh, we had chips set aside for you in case you want to come and play. House money? You know what I mean? Yes, you make five million or so for all the little oh, do that sure, you get involved sure, in, you know what I mean? Sure. And uh, it's you know, very costly, you know, so I want you to be able to have some money. Okay. Boy, yeah. you, you, are, you are a hustler. <laughs> uh, we're going to take a break. Stay right where you are. We'll be Thank back you. with Don Jeff. Oh! I'm going to ask you a question about boxing. I don't want to put you on the defensive, mm -hmm. but in recent years, a lot of people have got a little soured on boxing. Even Howard Cosell, who used to cover it, no longer covers it. Because it seems to be, I guess, the only sport in which the idea is really is to maim, in a way, or knock your scramble the brains of your opponent. How, how do you answer? People say, you know, you've heard this hue and cry, but people say, we ought to ban boxing. The other side of the coin is, well, it gives a lot of fellows a chance, you know, to be successful, become famous, and so forth. How do you... Well, boxing comes from a humble bed, and usually the people that come there, it's not an organized sport like uh, many of the other sports that has the, uh, the power of money to have publicity to give it a good image. You know, mm -hmm. boxing comes from the Hollywood image, also with the old movies with Cagney, the late, great right. James Cagney, and, and Bogart, you know what I mean? If you don't take a dive in five, your mother goes. He looks under the towel, he sees the rod, you know what I mean? And, and so this is what they see all the time. I didn't you know, know you did impersonations. You know, what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? All this type of thing. But see, we got guys like Michael Fuchs of uh, HBO, the president right. of HBO, Seth Abraham, who is the senior vice president of programming. Right. These two guys are innovative and imaginative. Mm -hmm. So they came to me and Butch Lewis. You know, and they say, we want to put on a heavyweight series to, to uplift the image of boxing, right. to put on this series to eliminate the dubiousness out of boxing and bring one heavyweight champion two to four to the public. Yeah. I thought it was a grand idea. So we launched all our efforts, and then we found Baron Hilton. Yeah. He was the god Zeus. I remember him. He had yeah, the hotel in Las Vegas. Las Vegas. <laughs> and then he called in a guy named John, Via, John Via Giovanco, yeah. who was a brilliant guy who has the imaginative mind. He's a mathematician. Yeah. He, might, he worked it all out on the math, the boards, you know, yeah. put it into action. And now the flagship is out there again, first and foremost, with Bill Cosby, we got our stars back. We're looking for the great stars to come there. Yeah. We're bringing, we're appealing to all the shakers and the rollers and the high rollers and the movers yeah. to come back to the Las Vegas Hilton because that's the number one casino hotel in the world. Yeah, now we're going to have this series there. Yeah. This series is going to bring one heavyweight champion. Yeah. That's going to remove all the doubt about how bad boxing is. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's going to be great. You know about brain scrambling. Yeah. What was my question? I uh, you were talking about the brain scrambling. Yeah, you know, now, wait a second. Boxing. Now, you told me a lot of things, Don, but what about when people say it is the only sport in which the idea... If people don't want to see self-defense, you know that. It was called the manly art of self-defense. People don't the want to see science. that. They want to go out there and see somebody really get decked, right? Yeah, like Mike, Mike Tyson does them one after another, knocks them out 18, That's 19 right. right in a row. That's the explosive punch that they go to see. Right. Now, but you've got to understand in boxing, it's the sweet science. Yeah, it's to hit and not get hit, but when you find the big punch, that makes it more exciting. Yeah, I'm when you When you find two honed and sharpened, 
athletes in the center of the ring. It's mm -hmm. like a virtuoso being played on a Stradivarius violin. You know, sweet, mm. sweet, sweet. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's what Muhammad Ali was. You uh -huh. know, he was lightning fast. So now these guys didn't all get their brains scrambled. You know what I mean? Right. When you look at football and you see Theismann on national TV. Get his link, got his yeah, link. Yeah, or you got to understand that. And you see these guys beating each other inside football, which they showed on HBO. Yeah. You know what I mean? You find all these different sports that are much more brutal yeah. than boxing. But those who don't understand boxing, they don't appreciate it. I'm so happy that you like it, John. You really have come a long way. Yeah. <laughs> where, where will this fight take place, uh, Don? It's going to take Sound place. like Bob and Ray, the Komodo Dragon. It's the largest <laughs> dragon. The fabulous oasis in the desert. Yeah. The Hilton Hotel, the no. flagship. Oh, oh, Baron uh, John G. on and I. Okay. Anyway, we have to take a break here. What? Another minute. Oh, I Please thought you said minute, I gotta man. go. Man, don't lose this minute. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what, John? I would love to guest host this show. You know what you did? Yeah. You took a guy out of Indianapolis, a weatherman named David Letterman. That's right. Put him on here and made him a star. Yeah. Weatherman, late night with David Letterman. Yeah. Then you took another lady whose mouth flowed like a river named Joan Rivers. Right. Put her on there. Can we talk? Yeah. Made her a star. You understand? You'd then like, you took, a, you'd like yeah, to have this show. Yeah, I wanna, no, I want to just guest host. I don't want to have it. You the big, you the tree. Yeah. I'm just a twig on the yeah. tree. A leaf picker up. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> now, Don, do you, do you think you'd be able to talk and fill the time? <laughs> I'm going to work at it. You know, then you yeah. took Ed McMahon. That's yeah. Right. Made, a, made him a promoter of a scheme of chance. Yeah. And made him a star. Every time you look around, you're getting a, a, a leaflet in the, in the mail saying, hey, look at this here. You can win $100 million. That's right. You know what I mean? I got one the other day. They, they put me in jail for this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll be right back. <laughs>